Welcome to my channel Inside Dentistry, a YouTube dental school. Subscribe and press the bell icon for more videos like this. Myself, Dr. Siddharth Roy. Let's begin. Welcome everyone. Welcome everyone to our class. Our goal is to help students understand their subjects to clear your concepts regarding any doubts you have while reading your official textbooks, to help students take their dental school anywhere they are and start studying about a topic, to change the way of learning so that the students love studying and not procrastinate about it, to prepare the students for NEET MDS exams. Absolutely, this is the best platform if you are preparing for NEET MDS. Today's topic is Principles of Radiographic Interpretations The video will help you understand how you can easily interpret radiographs in your daily dentistry, so keep watching. How will you interpret radiographs? The initial step is to visualize and search the abnormalities present in the radiographs, which can be of two types. Randomly search for any abnormality in the radiograph and systematically suffer any abnormality in the radiograph. So how will you do it? Let's see. Systematic searching method involves identifying the following structures. So in the panoramic image, you will observe few stuff such as posterior border of maxilla, here floor of sinus, this region zygomatic process of maxilla, this region and orbital rims. In the periapical image, you must look towards crown, root surface, pulp, pulp canal, periodontal membrane, lamina dura, etc. After the search is over, the clinician should form a mental 3D image of the abnormality which includes precise location, size, internal structure and how abnormalities affect the surrounding structure. Understanding disease process. A GLUT clinician should understand the disease process and just not look for the abnormalities to come to any diagnosis. A good clinician should think why certain features occur and when your why is clear, you can diagnose any disease. And how to analyze findings? Findings should be connected with the disease process. There are various types of findings. How to analyze them? Let's see. First thing is location. Apex of the root or any lateral border of the root can be a location. So the clinician must check the apex of the root or any location where the lesion is occurring. Size and shape of the lesion. What can be the size and shape of the lesion? Whether it is oval or circular. In this lesion, you can see it's a circular or oval lesion. Borders. The clinician must observe the border of the lesion, whether it is smooth or irregular, because it talks about the lesion. There are many lesions which have smooth surface and there are many lesions which has irregular surface. We can easily differentiate between them with the help of analyzing these features. Then comes towards internal features, we see that there is presence of any calcification or pus in it. Then effects of surrounding structures, such as whether this lesion is causing any resorption of the surrounding bones or not. Mature or unmature lesion. In the mature lesion, there will be more calcification and in the immature lesion, there won't be much calcification. After analyzing all these findings and features, one should come to the final interpretation. This is a flowchart which can easily help you to analyze the various features and come to a final interpretation. In the early lesion, the periapical bone is resolved and replaced with a fibrous tissue so it appears radiolucent. In the mature lesion, the mature lesion shows abnormal deposition of calcification and amorphous bone formation as you can see from the picture. 
the lesion appears to be surrounded by a radiolucent rim also so what is the main difference between early and mature lesion the early lesion will show a radiolucent lesion with no calcification in it but in the mature lesion it will show calcification bone formation and a surrounding radiolucent rim analytic strategy how will you analyze various disease just by looking at the features you should understand the disease process then only you can come up to a conclusion so various steps must be followed in order to analyze a disease or a lesion which includes analyzing the following features of the lesion first is whether the lesion is localized or generalized whether what is the epicenter of the lesion anatomic position of the lesion whether it is unilateral or bilateral whether it is single or multifocal understanding all of this you can understand whether the lesion is normal or abnormal if the lesion is abnormal then you should go for further uh, analysis let's see the first thing localized or generalized if the lesion is generalized then the abnormality can affect all the osseous structures of the maxilla or maxillofacial lesion for example bone loss due to endocrine disease or ameloblastoma so from this picture you can easily see that the lesion is generalized and it is spreading and it is present in more than one teeth you can easily see is present in the mandible in the localized abnormality the abnormality can be unilateral or bilateral so in this image you can see it is unilateral and affecting one tooth and this is the picture of a dentigeral cyst and it is a localized lesion but if you want to look for a bilateral lesion cherubism can be a good example this lesion cherubism is bilateral manifesting in both the left and right mandibular rami because the origin of the lesion is in the mandibular ramus region the mandibular molars has been displaced anteriorly on both the sides anatomic position of the lesion in the jaw to identify the exact location of the lesion in maxillofacial complex we should determine the epicenter of the lesion determining the epicenter will help us finding the disease process so some lesion tend to be found in specific locations also so finding the epicenter can help us the disease process and also help us differentiating between the various types of lesions happening for example dentigerous cyst usually occurs as a maxillary third molar region so this can help us understand okay this is the usually dentigerous cyst happening in third molar region so we can easily diagnose the lesion by just understanding its location its epicenter so let's discuss about this image so you can see this is an image and in in this image it shows an unerupted mandibular first molar and this is the lesion which is present coronal so the epicenter is coronal to the unerupted mandibular first molar and when you see this image it is the same lesion which we discussed earlier it is the occlusal view of the same lesion of which the epicenter is present occlusal to the or coronal to the tooth how to determine the origin of the lesion finding the epicenter of the lesion can help us determine the origin of the lesion origin can be of many types odontogenic and non odontogenic it is usually of two types but there can be many types also so if the epicenter is coronal to a tooth then the lesion is composed of odontogenic origin for example we already studied about this uh, picture it says the lesion is present coronal so this means that it is composed of odontogenic origin and if the epicenter is above the inferior alveolar nerve then it is odontogenic then also it is odontogenic so for example this is the inferior alveolar nerve and this is the mandible and lesion is present above the inferior alveolar nerve then it is odontogenic 
and if the epicenter is below the infraalveolar canal then it is of non odontogenic origin so if it is the infraalveolar canal and if the epicenter is present below then it is non odontogenic origin and if the epicenter originates inside the infraalveolar canal then it is neural or vascular in nature so this type of lesion it is neural or vascular in nature for example if you look at this two picture you can see this is the jaw and this is the inferior alveolar canal and the epicenter is present below the inferior alveolar canal so it is odontogenic in origin and if you see this picture you will see that the lesion is present inside the inferior alveolar canal so it is neural or vascular this is a picture of ameloblastoma and in this the epicenter is above inferior alveolar canal so this is the inferior alveolar canal and this is the ameloblastoma which is the epicenter so the lesion is of onogenic in origin and look at this picture it is maxillary sinus and the lesion is in sinus so that is why it is non onogenic in origin why if the lesion is in maxillary sinus then the lesion is of non onogenic origin as the lesion has invaded into the sinus from the alveolar bone of the maxilla so this is the alveolar bone of the maxilla and the lesion has invaded into the sinus so this is the reason it is not onogenic in origin why epicenter why we have to find the epicenter finding epicenter can give you an idea about the location of the lesion as there are certain lesions which occurs at a particular place as we mentioned earlier for example osteomyelitis occurs in the mandible and rarely in the maxilla and look at this image it is a image of periapical osseous dysplasia which usually occurs in the periapical region of the teeth and then the epicenters of the central giant cell granuloma is commonly located the anterior to the first molars in the mandible and anterior to the cuspids in the maxilla in young patients single or multifocal we have to check whether the lesion is single or it is multifocal in nature that means whether the lesion is localized at only one place in the jaw or it is localized in multiple places in the jaw so for example periapical cemented dysplasia keratocystic onogenic tumor metastatic lesion multiple myeloma this can be multifocal and this is the picture of multiple myeloma showing multifocal lesions for example this image this image is periapical cemented dysplasia showing a multifocal image see 1 2 3 3 focal size we have to determine the size of the lesion then only we can differentiate from one lesion to another lesion for example in dentigerous cyst the size of the lesion increases continuously because of osmotic pressure and they have a very high tendency to grow but hyperplastic follicle they have very less chances of growing so the size remains intact so dentigerous cyst is larger in size than hyperplastic follicle so this can help in differentiating between these two lesions as these two lesions looks so alike 